alternate timelines, asking the question, what if? Imagining different paths for history to go down, changes both big and small, and I came across this iceberg online, created by the user Emperor Fanta, who I thank for creating this list of alternate timelines that have been imagined throughout the years. It's a list so extensive that in my last hour-long video, I was only able to cover half of the topics. So here I am with part two. I've included a few of your suggestions to the iceberg that weren't on the original list. The Gate of Time The Gate of Time is a novel by science fiction writer Philip Jose Farmer about an Iroquois fighter pilot that after getting shot down, finds himself in a world far different from the one he once knew. Instead of landing in World War II Europe, he realizes that he is surrounded by an entirely different people. Not even European, but a people that speak in a similar language to his own ancestral tribe. Eventually, he realizes that he has somehow landed in an alternate world where the Americas simply don't exist. There was no crossing into the Americas thousands of years ago, and instead what we would call Native Americans went on to colonize northern Eurasia instead, even outpopulating and taking the place of Slavs in our own timeline. The Americas, while sunken, are not entirely gone. They instead are a series of island chains running from north to south, the remnants of the Rockies and Andes. While never populated by Amerindians, these lands are perfect homes for another people coming across the sea. Without North America to be the barrier that provides a warm ocean current to Europe, this Europe is far colder. The continent is split between Amerindian alliances in the east and groups like the Lithuanians, Germans, and Celts in the west. Lands we'd call the British Isles are instead bloodland. Monotheism as a concept seems to have not taken off as Europeans continue to worship the old gods. Overall, the world seems more connected to its ancient roots. Greece and Israel, as an example, are staunch rivals competing over the eastern Mediterranean, while the Etruscans and Rasna struggle over the west. Fire on the Mountain Fire on the Mountain is a novel by Terry Bisson about a timeline where the radical abolitionist John Brown successfully raised the town of Harper's Ferry taking its stockpile of weaponry and arming the local slaves. In this alternate world, this kickstarts a massive slave revolt in 1859. The main change in this world is that the issue of slavery is not ever decided by the Civil War. Instead, it's decided by the slaves themselves in an armed rebellion within the South. Aided by the likes of Harriet Tubman and Frederick Douglass, the slaves end up declaring independence from the United States. Emancipation and the war are a much more complicated affair as Mexico becomes involved and retakes California and Texas. The United States in general shrinks. It is unable to retake the territory lost in the rebellion, and it cannot bring the new black state under its control. Instead, as the 19th century continues on, this state called Nova Africa becomes a socialist nation. Supported by Karl Marx, leftism in the United States and around the Western world is more prominent as revolutions rage across Europe. Another French commune is declared. Effectively, by the end of the 19th century, capitalism itself collapses. In this alternate timeline, after about a century, technology has progressed leagues beyond even our own in the 21st century. Nova Africa is a prominent and successful nation, landing astronauts on Mars by the 1950s. There is an alternate history novel in this universe, much like Man the High Castle, that imagines a dystopia world where John Brown died and the issue of slavery was determined by a civil war in the U.S. If Israel Lost the War If Israel Lost the War is a novel by three authors, Robert Little, Richard Chestnoff, and Edward Klein. Written only two years after the Six-Day War, the novel imagines what would have occurred if the recent conflict had ended in an Israeli failure. Israel in the book is effectively conquered. The novel entails a total Arab victory. 
Palestine as a nation actually doesn't become independent. Instead, the land is simply split between the victor nations. In this newly occupied land, former Nazi collaborators and criminals are put in charge to oversee the Jewish population. The timeline imagines that if the US pretty much ignored Israel, it would have fallen in the Six Day War. Bobby Kennedy wouldn't have gotten shot and instead goes on to beat Nixon. The novel has largely been used as a worst-case scenario in Israeli right-wing circles, pretty much saying that even if Israel fell, Palestine wouldn't be cared about by their neighbors. Which is a topic I am not even going to touch on, I'm just describing what these timelines are about. Moving on. Player 2 Start Player 2 Start is a timeline on AlternateHistory.com by users Rysenkari and Nivek. In our history in the 90s, Sony originally came to Nintendo to help develop their next console. Nintendo turned them down, and instead picked the company Philips. A decision which backfired terribly, not only because of the games, but it created an enemy in Sony, who then decided to join the console business with the PlayStation, just out of revenge. In this alternate timeline, Nintendo instead chooses Sony, creating a world where the two don't become rivals, but partners. The point of this alternate timeline is mostly just for the funny changes to pop culture in the 2000s that almost actually happened, such as Avril Lavigne never becoming a singer and instead going into skateboarding. Nintendo releases the Ultra Nintendo in partnership with Sony instead of the N64. N64 games as we would know them still are developed, but with the inclusion of CD-ROMs, they are much more ambitious with the better hardware, such as an alternate Super Mario 64 with way more worlds and content. Rare as a company sticks with Nintendo and Gran Turismo premieres on the Ultra Nintendo. Nintendo also releases the Game Boy Nova, a handheld with the ability to show 3D graphics in the late 90s. James Cameron directs a Metroid movie, which changes the landscape of film and makes video game adaptations much more mainstream. Quentin Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez dual direct the 1998 Godzilla movie. Phineas and Ferb are greenlit as a series when first pitched in the 90s, making these characters and show belong to an entirely older generation, being among cartoons like Spongebob, Dexter, and Ed, Ed and Eddie. Pokemon Second Generation comes out with the games Pokemon Sun and Moon, the original names for gold and silver. Nintendo's next console is the Nintendo Wave, sticking to the original ocean theme of the GameCube, while Microsoft premieres a less technically impressive Xbox with their launch title The Covenant, a third-person shooter developed by Bungie. In other news, Shigeru Miyamoto dies after getting hit by a car while riding his bike. Bring the Jubilee Bring the Jubilee is a novel by Wald Moore about a timeline where the Confederates win the Battle of Gettysburg. The South then wins the war, and only a few years later, go on to free the slaves, while also deciding to invade their southern neighbors, creating the Golden Circle. The United States loses its relevancy as a nation, while the South becomes a new global power, even becoming a superpower that rivals the German Union, a Central European superstate which formed from the German and Austro-Hungarian empires. The US, for the most part, are basically the losers of history, as they haven't even really been able to settle past Iowa. The South, meanwhile, is successful, and actually less racist than the North. The North, for the most part, is a land of indentured, weak citizens. So, uh, yeah. Red Alert. The Red Alert trilogy was a strategy game series developed by Westwood Studios, and later just EA. In the series, Albert Einstein performs some time travel shenanigans and attempts to stop World War II, inadvertently allowing the Soviets to grow so strong that Stalin launches a war against Europe, causing an alternate global war anyway. After being defeated in the war, Stalin is canonically killed with a rock, and the Soviets are left under the watch of the West. However, they soon are under the influence of the psychic Yuri, a megalomaniac madman who successfully takes over the Soviet Union and launches a war 
to conquer the United States. Teaming up with Einstein, the U.S. and the West defeat Yuri's mind control and defeat the Soviets, leading to the USSR eventually falling. While the Soviets are falling, two leaders travel back in time to kill Einstein, who defeated the Soviets in the first place, and also invented nukes, which brought on the Cold War. By killing Einstein and stopping nukes from ever being invented, the Japanese become a prosperous empire who use samurai mechs to invade the Allies and Soviets from giant aircraft carriers. There is no real canonical end to the series, except it is suggested that the Soviets do eventually fall to the Brotherhood of Nod. Iron Harvest Iron Harvest is a visual setting turned game by Polish artist Jack Ebrzalski. It is set in an alternate world in 1920, where Eastern Europe is largely divided between three major powers, the Polish, the Rusviet, and the Empire of Saxony. Polania is an alternate and stronger Poland, which successfully rebelled against their occupiers in the 1860s. The country is a constitutional republic, a rarity on the continent. The Empire of Saxony, a far more militaristic and stronger Germany, and the Rusviet, a nation that is pretty much just if the communist revolution stopped halfway through. There are combined elements of both the old Tsar regime and the new constitutional revolutionary government. The government is largely under the control of Rasputin, who overthrew the Tsar officially in the 1920s. Apparently Rasputin is a part of a secret organization called Fenri. The Battle of Warsaw during the War of 1920 is one of the most important events in the 20th century, halting the Russian advance west. Polania, while small, was able to keep the Rusviets at bay. There is an uneasy peace, while Polania remains occupied in some regions. This war may look a bit different than what you would expect from the 1920s, and the reason for that is because of gigantic metal mechs called auto machines. They were developed by Nikola Tesla, which really is the best explanation you need for how technology went down this path. Auto machines are the barest version of mechs you can imagine, operated from steam and coal. They can range from small anti-infantry mini-mechs to larger anti-cavalry units and even monster landwalkers. Each faction has their own unique doctrine when it comes to the mechs. Polania, for instance uses lighter but more maneuverable walkers that complement horsebound cavalry. Agent of Byzantium Agent of Byzantium is a novel set in an alternate 14th century where due to Islam never existing, the Byzantine and Sassanid Persian Empire remain prominent powers. The novel is a collection of short stories centered around a Byzantine agent called Basil Argyros, as he's sent on various missions throughout the Empire, such as a spy, or a diplomat, or even a military asset, an international man of mystery in medieval Byzantium. In this alternate world, Mohammed became a devout Christian and never went on to become a prophet for another global religion. Instead, he becomes a canonized saint of the church, Saint Mohammed, who lived out his days in a Syrian monastery. The Middle East remains much as it had since the ancient times, a slugfest between two empires. The West, or anything in Germania and Gaul, is left ignored by the Byzantines, seen as a backwards and barbarous place. In a way, the Byzantines regain the former glory of the Roman Empire, uniting the entire Mediterranean. This world is as if the ancient world never truly went away. Much of Northern Europe remains stateless and pagan. Roma Eterna Following the same idea, Roma Eterna is a novel by Robert Silverberg about a timeline where the Roman Empire never collapsed. The cause of which is pretty much that monotheism never takes off like it did in our world. After a catastrophic attempt at escaping Israel, the Jews under Moses are largely relegated to an even smaller minority in the Middle East. They never return to their homeland. The Old Testament and Judaism are never a significant group within the Roman Empire. Christianity doesn't exist or spread, nor Islam after brutal Roman suppressions. The ancient old world continues to survive in one way or another, 
and a polytheistic, militaristic Roman West becomes the model for the next 1500 years. Really much doesn't change. The world is divided between two major empires in the West and East. Technology is developed like machines, cars, and even space travel. The Hebrews attempt to get a new colony on Mars, however their rocket explodes mid-flight. The reviews for this novel were middling. Island in the Sea of Time Island in the Sea of Time is a three-part series by S.M. Sterling about a U.S. Coast Guard vessel and the entire island of Nantucket being transported backwards in time to the Bronze Age. More specifically, the 1250s BC, a time of the Trojan War. The story revolves around the crew members of the ship and the population of the island eventually dividing and spreading out, using their knowledge of the world to influence historical events, such as interacting with Native American tribes and civilizations like the Olmec, or even just straight up deciding to become kings in this time that were largely lost to myth. Modern people attempting to become prominent in an age of heroes. This story is a spin-off of another novel by Sterling, called Dies the Fire, where physics and science begin to break down. Think of it like that NBC show that aired a few years ago, Revolution. Modern civilization collapses because technology and electricity just stop working on a very specific date in 1998. In the aftermath, Portland becomes a neo-feudalist land. Much of the United States east of the Mississippi River is simply called the Death Zone. The Mormons form a new state of Deseret, because of course they would. While much of the coasts and well-populated areas of the former U.S. are left desolated, the main place to survive is in the interior Great Plains or Cascadia. While one series focuses on the apocalyptic aftermath, the island in the Sea of Time focuses on the island of Nantucket and the vessel which were transported back in time thanks to the same event which ended the world in 1998. Hako Ichiyu. Hako Ichiyu is a timeline created on alternatehistory.com by the user Asami about an alternate Japan that instead of going down a militaristic path in the early 20th century, instead went with the constitutionalists and liberals. This creates a modernized Japan that has no need for the aggressive expansion of the empire. This scenario, however, isn't simply focused on Japan, which throughout an alternate Taisho era moves towards a stronger democracy and not a military oligarchy. With World War I raging and Japan gaining German territory in China, there is a militaristic coup in Tokyo to force back the democratic reforms and force the emperor to concede to more hardline power, known as the incident of October 6th. However, in this alternate timeline, the plan for the militarists goes horribly wrong, backfiring and harming the emperor in the process. Overplaying their hand, the conspirators are vilified by the public and even high-ranking officers are tried for treason and executed. This stunts the growing nationalistic militarism that in our timeline dominated Japanese politics pre-World War II. The United States never joins World War I, thanks to Wilson being defeated by an isolationist William Bora. The war in general becomes a situation that all parties are trying to find a way out of. The British and Japanese reach an agreement with Germany to leave the Western Front, an arrangement which suited all, but alienated them from their former allies. The attack which left the Emperor injured only infuriated the Japanese public so much it led to a general shift away from the military and heavy nationalists. Lenin is assassinated in 1916, leading to a far different Russia. Korea is given more liberties and becomes an independent state within the Japanese realm. China eventually falls to a new Mongol empire led by the warlord Roman von Ergen Sternberg, not only uniting China, but pushing back against the Japanese. Emperor Taisho succumbs to his injuries, and now a new era begins under Hirohito. In an alternate, better relationship between the US and Japan, the Roosevelts and Japanese royal family are on very friendly speaking terms. FDR's own niece eventually marries Emperor Hirohito and becomes an American Empress of Japan. I don't want to keep going into too much detail with another World War II scenario, so I'll just leave it at that.
The Alteration The Alteration is a novel by Kingsley Amis, set in a world where there never is a reformation, and instead Catholicism remains a dominant force in Western and Northern Europe. Martin Luther not only never rebels against the church, but falls back into the institution's good graces, eventually becoming a pope himself, Pope Germanian I. There never is a Henry VIII, the Tudors and Spanish monarchy create an heir, Stephen II, who fights a crusade against a usurper, ending in a Catholic victory. Ireland and Scotland remain firmly in English hands and for some reason are renamed into West England and North England, respectively. If that isn't the most cursed thing you can imagine, I don't know what is. London stops being the capital of England and instead is changed to Coverley. Overall, Western society remains much more unified around the concept of the church, and history revolves around religious ties, especially against the Muslim world. Society as a whole is controlled by secret agents and organizations that are much like the Gestapo of our own timeline. Like a modernized version of the Inquisition. For the most part, the Americas are still under the control of empires like Spain and Portugal. There is much less technological progress, and electricity doesn't even exist. In many ways, this world is displayed as a dystopia, a Protestant's worst nightmare. Think of it a lot like the 40k universe, with a society of zealots where nothing really changes for hundreds of years. The Footprint of Mussolini The Footprint of Mussolini is a timeline by the user Serrero on alternatehistory.com. Almost struck down by a communist assassin's bullet, Mussolini is saved by a Jewish fascist supporter. The supporter, giving his life for Italy, changes Mussolini's perspective, altering his relationship with the Nazis. Effectively, Italy doesn't join the Axis powers. The Italians in this alternate timeline openly spare the Jews from any hardships of the war, and he ends up kind of getting an almost hero status in an alternate Israel. It's pretty odd. Frostpunk. Frostpunk is a survival simulation city game developed by 11-Bit Studios set in an alternate 1886. The Earth mysteriously falls into what can only be described as a brutal Ice Age winter. Across the Northern Hemisphere, giant storms destroy society and force millions to flee south. This event is simply known as the Great Frost. In this alternate 19th century, the world's first computer is developed leading to the birth of a more technological industrial revolution, such as the creation of steam cores and automatons. Surviving cities such as Tesla City and Winterhome were lost, the survivors fleeing to New London. Cities grow around massive generators, one of the few sources of heat and power in this new world. Tesla City in its final days was ruled by an autocratic Tesla, who in his madness accidentally electrocuted the population to death. Yet its remains are still valuable for any survivors that may scavenge its ruins. A Different Flesh A Different Flesh is an anthology book by Harry Turtledove, set in a timeline where Homo sapiens never successfully crossed into the Americas, and instead, the New World is populated by the last remnants of Homo erectus. When Europeans first land and encounter the people of the New World, they wouldn't be interacting with tribes of Amera Indians or grand civilizations like the Aztec and Inca. Instead, the Americas would be populated by a more primitive, for lack of better words, species that would not be Homo sapien. These people, called by the Europeans Sims, would be distantly related ancestors to Homo sapiens by millions of years. Ones who might not have the brain capacity of modern humans, lacking development in language and other linguistic and social functions. Sims cannot speak, though they do understand language in the most basic aspects. This is used to make them very loyal servants by the Spanish, Portuguese, and English. The existence of the Sims raises a lot of uncomfortable questions. What is considered human? Does that label even matter? 
In this alternate America, instead of interacting with native tribes and tribal politics, Europeans find themselves fighting literal cave people. Sims are considered ape men. In an almost messed up twist of fate, the existence of these non-speaking ape men actually end up helping the advancement of other races, such as African slaves. As Sims are considered so unhuman that they undermine the very existence of racism against Africans. Which man, Turtle Dove, that is a lot to process. The ultimate lesson Turtle Dove gives to this whole conundrum is that while the Sims wouldn't be humans like we'd imagine, and they could never really be in human society, they should still be treated fairly, whatever that means. This story just goes down some weird paths, such as an American impregnating a Sim female, giving birth to a human erectus hybrid, and also a homo erectus getting AIDS. I think we should move on. Our Struggle. Our Struggle is a timeline created by the user The Red on AlternateHistory.com, which imagines an alternate world where Hitler became a communist. That's pretty much what it says. Hitler gets influenced early on by the Futurist movement. In this alternate timeline, the Futurist movement influences a young Hitler down the tanky road. He and his party, with even Goebbels being here, still take over Germany in the 30s, renaming it the German Workers' Republic. Much of the story is just the Nazis' rise to power, swapped out with communist elements. Much of the story is just the Nazis' rise to power, but replaced with communist elements. 1862. 1862 is a novel by Robert Conroy set in a world where the British decide to join the Confederacy in the Civil War. After the Trent Affair, the British joined the Confederacy in the Civil War, even sending in troops. But by some strange twist of fate, this isn't the doom for the Union that you would expect. Instead, the North defeats both the rebels and the British, forcing them to surrender even earlier in an alternate 1863. Not only do the British lose, they lose their holdings in Canada, and the Confederates mourn the loss of Robert E. Lee. Lincoln is never assassinated. Somehow, while being outmatched 2-1, to one, the Union just wins the war in an even faster amount of time. As One Star Sets, Another Rises. As One Star Sets, Another Rises is a story written by the user, the gosh darn Hearts of Iron 2 fan, on AlternateHistory.com. In this story, the entire nation of Japan, along with all of its people, are transported back in time to 1939, smack dab in the middle of the war against China and two years before Pearl Harbor. What would happen if you replaced this incredibly militaristic and brutal imperial state with a pacifist democracy? The complete opposite in mentality from their past. This story isn't simply about people from Japan being transported back in time, but also many groups from our modern day, like Americans and Germans too. Important figures in the past learn about the future from shows and even documentaries. Japanese admirals from 1939 learn about their tactical mistakes from documentaries on the History Channel. The German public somehow learns of the extent of the Holocaust and Nazi Germany falls to a revolution. Mexico sells its oil to Japan and uses the financial leverage to become a first world nation. Much of this timeline just compares and contrasts how much each nation has changed since World War II. Watchmen. Watchmen is a graphic novel written by Alan Moore with art by Dave Gibbons, and it also happens to be set in an alternate history timeline. In this world, cape superheroes have been the norm for years, although no crime fighter has actual superpowers. That was until the creation of Dr. Manhattan. Manhattan is pretty much a god among men. He can rearrange matter, is impervious to death and harm. Using Dr. Manhattan, the United States obliterated the Viet Cong and won the Vietnam War, propelling Nixon into winning not only another election, but repealing the 22nd Amendment. By the time of this alternate 1984 America, Nixon is an old man running for his fifth term. His actions in office have only led to the world coming closer to a nuclear war, one that is prevented only after a sudden catastrophe. Disunited States of America 
This United States of America is a novel by Harry Turtledove set in an alternate timeline where the United States never formed as a cohesive nation, but instead developed more as an alliance under the Articles of Confederation. In this alternate world, the United States as an idea pretty much died right out of the gate. Instead of states coming together, they split further apart, soon acting as their own nations, with their own agendas and rivalries with their neighbors. Somehow, states like California still exist, just in a more general term since the name predates the U.S. Not much is really officially known about the borders within North America. The book revolves around a conflict between Ohio and Virginia, so that's where the main focus lies. Two rivals clashing over coal in the region we would call West Virginia. Not only in competition over resources, Ohio and Virginia are socially split as well. Ohio has historically armed black uprisings in Virginia, the results of which have been mixed and often lead to nothing more than a nuisance. War eventually erupts in 2097. Ohio launches chemical and biological weapon attacks on Virginia, such as measles, which leads to immense civilian casualties. This war leads to a back and forth over the Ohio River and Appalachia, and by the end of the conflict, borders go back to where they were pre-war. It's alluded to that these types of conflicts are simply the norm in this alternate North America. The North Star is Red. The North Star is Red is a timeline created by the user TastySpam on AlternateHistory.com, in which Henry Wallace, FDR's original vice president, isn't replaced by Truman, and after FDR's death, Wallace becomes the next American president in a post-World War II world. As a result, the early Cold War goes down a different path, such as the Chinese Communists not successfully taking the entire country. Instead, China becomes split between a larger nationalist South and a communist Manchukuo. Japan is divided between the US and Soviets. At the very beginning, Wallace takes a far less aggressive stance against the Soviets, unlike Truman. His actions focus more on peace and cooperation with the Russians, and agreements to not fight proxy wars over the affairs of smaller states. After a convoluted election in 1948, Wallace loses to Republican Earl Warren, yet due to electoral college shenanigans and voting by the legislature, Wallace's VP Richard Russell ends up as president instead. Eventually, by the end of the 50s, McCarthy wins the presidency. His time in office is turbulent at best. Eventually, the West and Soviets come to blows in what is called the Three Years' War, a conflict that spans Europe and leaves millions dead, involving nukes dropped on Sweden and North China respectively. This, however, does not escalate into a complete Third World War. Thousand Week Reich Thousand Week Reich is a mod for the strategy game Hearts of Iron 4. The main specifics of this mod is that the main beneficiary of this timeline are simply the Nazis themselves. Italy and Japan, despite being a part of the Axis powers, don't have the greatest fates by an alternate 1952. Japan ends up nuked four times, and Italy has become nothing more than a German rump state. The remaining Western democratic nations that do exist form this timeline's equivalent of NATO, called the Toronto Accords. The main reality in this world is that while the Axis and fascist nations have won, they are not efficient and are teetering on the edge of collapse. I mean, this is Hearts of Iron 4, so that's kind of just par for the course. New Deal Coalition Retained New Deal Coalition Retained is a timeline written by user The Congressman on AlternateHistory.com. Due to the death of Eisenhower's chief of staff, the Republican Party pushes for civil rights instead of the Democrats by the 1960s. This leads to Nixon winning the election of 1960. The U.S. takes a far more stringent anti-communist approach under Nixon, such as invading Cuba as soon as Batista is overthrown by Castro. This sparks a civil war which results in the island being divided in two. Nixon was assassinated in 1963 just like Kennedy, and also coincidentally by Lee Harvey Oswald. But instead of this taking place in Dallas, this takes place in Baltimore. In the aftermath, Nixon's VP turned President Nelson Rockefeller 
loses his election in 1964 to Kennedy himself. Under JFK, the Democrats would begin to split more over the issue of civil rights. Effectively in this timeline, there is no great switch. Going forward, the Democrats remain strongly in the South, while Republicans continue on in the North. In the election of 1968, Kennedy loses his own nomination within the party to George Wallace. It turns out there are much more turbulent times and even worse security in this alternate timeline, because there are a few more assassination deaths. Prince Philip dies in a bombing due to the Troubles. Because of this tragedy, the Queen abdicates her throne, and Charles ascends in the 1970s. Under Wallace, the Americans in Vietnam are far less restrained, leading to even more civilian casualties and a total war approach. Wallace even approves a total land invasion of North Vietnam, resulting in the obliteration and conquest of Hanoi. This success only cements Wallace's popularity, emboldening and popularizing his views on segregation far into the 70s. Yet despite this, Wallace stuck to a Democrat strategy of big government, even adopting universal health care and expanding the FDR safety net of the New Deal. This is a Democrat party still emboldened in the South, pertaining to poor whites and segregation. Oga Shrugs Oga Shrugs is an alternate timeline wiki, whose entire purpose is to detail a world where after being betrayed by Nintendo in the early 90s, Sony's president Norio Oga simply shrugs the whole affair off, and doesn't dedicate Sony to creating the PlayStation out of pure spite. This sounds pretty familiar to the other timeline, Player 2 Start. The biggest difference here is that in Player 2 Start, the Nintendo-Sony partnership actually goes through, when in this alternate timeline, the partnership still fails, but Sony doesn't actually do anything about it in revenge. The state of the gaming industry remains how it was pre-Sony, with Sega and Nintendo being companies dedicated purely to game consoles and video games. As examples of what changes in this timeline, Final Fantasy stays exclusive on Nintendo consoles. Final Fantasy VII is in fact a massive system seller for the N64. Star Fox receives an anime adaptation on TV, much like Pokemon or Kirby, though it's cancelled after 23 episodes and becomes a cult favorite. As the generation comes to an end, Sega unveils the Dreamcast, which without competition from the PlayStation, becomes a much more successful system. Castlevania Resurrection fails commercially and sets the franchise back. It's criticized for its poor controls and dated graphics. Without Sony, Microsoft is never bothered to join the Council War, instead still choosing to release games on the PC. Halo premieres in 2001 on both PC and Mac. It's a popular franchise on the computer, but is never ported over to consoles. Any mature games in general, such as Grand Theft Auto, find more success on the PC market. The Game Boy Nitro is released, the equivalent to the DS of our own timeline. It however only has one screen. It becomes an instant success, finding a massive general audience. The Nitro defines the mid-2000s, being both a mix of a DS, a PDA, and a PSP. Nintendo never releases the Wii, instead launching it with its original name, The Revolution. Sega never falls out of the console business, and follows the Dreamcast up with their own 7th gen console, the Sega Pluto. Eventually, Uncharted is released for both The Revolution and Pluto, while shooters like Call of Duty remain exclusive to the PC. The general idea you want to get from this is that the more mature games and shooters remain on the PC market, while family-friendly games stay on the console. The Gate of Worlds The Gate of Worlds is a novel by Robert Silverberg, which takes place in an alternate world where the Black Death wiped out three-fourths of Europe. This is a less extreme version of the Years of Rice and Salt. However, it still halts development and stunts the continent in the long term. This timeline sees a much more successful Ottoman conquest of the continent. The Americas are not discovered until far later than in our own timeline, renamed the Hesperides for a legendary garden of Greek myth far on the western edge of the world. Effectively, the Turks control most of Europe, even cities like Paris and London. Anything of importance or art is written in the Turkish language. Cuban Missile War 
The Cuban Missile War is a timeline created by the user Amerigo Vespucci on AlternateHistory.com. The thread is a detailed account by the hour and minute of every decision that occurred within the White House and Kremlin on those eventful days in 1962 during the Cuban Missile Crisis. This timeline is pretty much the worst case scenario and a showcase of how quickly everything could have gone badly if just a few wrong actions occurred. Very early on in the crisis, negotiations break down. An exhausted Soviet submarine crew misinterprets a threat and takes it as the war has already begun, launching their own nuclear missile, destroying two Navy ships, and incapacitating many others due to the shockwave and blinding light. JFK holds back on any immediate escalation, though the US does warn that they will now kill any submarines past a certain line. This action is seen as a threat by the Soviets, who move into full mobilization. Talks break down, and American ships begin getting sunk by the Soviet Navy. As panic begins across the globe, Kennedy orders an attack on the Cuban missiles. A firefight breaks out in Berlin. The missiles are obliterated, but the US is now at war with Cuba. Ultimately, the timeline ends with what you would expect, World War III. The Difference Engine The Difference Engine is a novel by William Gibson and Bruce Sterling, set in a world where a mechanical computer is built in Victorian Britain, creating an alternate evolution of technology in the 19th century. This rapidly changes British society, leading to political upheaval and even an attempted coup. But after this bit of chaos, the empire becomes stronger than ever thanks to steam technology and this new analytical engine. The British even successfully break up the United States, leading to a bunch of smaller squabbling states in North America. California and Texas, as an example, are staunch rivals, while communists successfully took over the island of Manhattan. Overall, the world is much more British and more technologically advanced, just in a far different way than we might expect. If any of this looks and sounds familiar, it's because this novel is largely responsible for creating steampunk. 1942 1942 is a novel by Robert Conroy set in an alternate timeline where Japan thoroughly destroys the U.S. forces at Pearl Harbor, not simply leaving the aircraft carriers and other ships to rebuild, but crippling the American Pacific Fleet. The result from this is a far different Pacific theater for the U.S., as they are fighting a Japanese invasion of not only the Pacific Islands, but Hawaii itself. The book revolves around resistance and this battle for the Hawaiian Islands, a conflict which defines the US and the Pacific, more than just island hopping or battles against the Japanese fleet. Crimson Skies Crimson Skies is a board game turned video game series created by Jordan Wiseman and Dave McCoy, set in a diesel punk alternate 1930s world where aviation dominates the globe and the United States has been split into various nations. In this chaotic political era, order and anarchy reign to such an extent that air piracy not only controls the skies, but are the main factions of this world. One of the major pitches of this whole idea, highways and ground transportation are so utterly destroyed, the only way to really travel or do anything is by air. Bringing on an age of giant zeppelins and dogfighting planes, North America is made up of such states like Empire State, Maritime Province, Protectorate of the Outer Banks, Confederation of Dixie, the Industrial States of America. Each small nation does have its own personality and ideology. The Industrial States of America, for instance, are probably one of the most politically stable of these nations. The Industrial States of America, for instance, is probably one of the more politically stable of these nations. Internally, its infrastructure is intact, and it's allowed to be a manufacturing superpower. It never actually seceded from the US, but simply outlasted the federal government when they collapsed. 